Folks, here are five really, really awesome M tricks. I don't really want to waste any time. Let's hit some music. Let's go check it out. All right, the first trick is concatenation while summarizing the data. I'm sure you've done summarization or group by in Power Query, but you can also do some crazy concatenation in that. So take a look at the simple example that I have. We have a couple of columns, date, region, product ID, units, and then we have created two additional columns, one for the year and one for the month name. Now let's just say that I would like to create a list of all the products that were sold for every single year, every single month, and every single region. So year, month, and the region, give me the list of the unique products that were sold. How do we do that? Now, of course, we will have to summarize the data first, and I'm gonna go over to the transform tab, click on the group by option, and in the group by, I'm just gonna click on advanced, and that is where I will pick up the first summarization, which is a year, second summarization, which is going to be the month name, and the third one is going to be the region, of course, region. And then in the region, let's just say that I wanna have total units. Total units is just a calculation that I'm creating it at the moment, but uh, of course I would want to have the list of the products as well. So units, click on okay, and then we are kind of good to go. And that's what we have it at the moment. Now, if you take a look at this formula up on the top table.group, it has created this particular calculation or the column total units right here, and that is the formula for that. Let's just revise this formula for a bit and create one additional column, which is going to give me the list of all the unique products that were sold in that month. So what do I do? I am just gonna format this a bit. All right, if you now take a look at the M code right here, this actually creates a list for every single column Light's gone. I'm gonna continue with this. And we are back. We were speaking about this formula that we just created, which was nothing but total units. It's a column that we created. Every single column that you create within the group row step is going to be a separate list altogether. So total units is a list right here. You can see that the entire function is within the list. Should we wanna create more such formulas or more such columns, I keep saying formulas, but more such columns, we have to encapsulate within the curly braces. Now, let's just create one more column and that column is going to be nothing but the list of the products and I'm gonna maybe have a a curly braces to begin with because that is going to be a list. The first part of the formula is what is the name of the column and that is considered that to be products. And then I'm going to say, hey, uh, each underscore, which is going to give me the entire underlying table. Now, if I kind of press enter right here, you're going to see that I do get a table. If I peek into the table, you're going to see that we have all the columns that are matching this particular criteria, which is 2011, the month of Jan, and the region of Delhi, and these are all the rows which are matching that criteria. Now, from this particular table, I just wanna extract one column right here, which is product ID, so I can say something like, hey, just give me the product ID column. So I can say product ID, uh, close the bracket and press enter, and what I'm gonna get is one column extracted from this table, and I'm gonna get a list instead, and I get the entire list. Now, obviously in this list, in a certain region, in a certain month, many products could have sold multiple number of times as well. And that is why we have duplicacy right here. I want to remove the duplicates and therefore I can use a function called list.distinct. Now list.distinct is going to give me the unique items, of course, and I can just close the bracket right here. And then I just want to combine all the items of that list. So now we have all the uniques and I can now use the text.combine function to combine all the list items, which are nothing but texts. So text.combine, uh, it asks you, hey, give me all the texts, but those texts should be in the form of a list. So we have all the texts, which are nothing but product names. They are in the form of a list and that's what I'd like to combine. And the separator is going to be, let's say, a comma and a space between the concatenation that is going to be formed. And now we have all the products which are sold in the year of 11, the month of Jan, and the region of New Delhi. And these are a list of all the products. Now, sometimes you're not going to like this because there are like far too many products to display right here. And you may want to have all the products split out in different rows not split out in different cells, but split out in a single cell, but in different rows. So what you can do is instead of having the delimiter as nothing but a comma and a space, I can have the delimiter as an enter. So within the quotation marks, I can use the shift enter to move to the next row. And that is where I have placed an enter within the quotation marks. And as soon as I confirm on this particular formula, you're gonna see that all the products that were sold in that 
uh, month, year and the region combination are now split into different rows. Although they are not rows like different cells altogether, it is a single cell, but the products are actually split out in different rows of data. So you can choose any combination of how do you want to split the products either by a comma delimiter or by an enter delimiter that is up to you. But that was trick number one. All right, trick number two is transposing the data without actually doing the transpose. At the moment, if you take a look at my data, I've got three columns, one, two, and three, and it has got a couple of rows. Now, if I were to go back to the transform tab and hit the transpose there, the rows are going to be moved into columns and the columns are going to be moved into rows. So take a look. So row number one, two, and three, which were vertical initially have now become horizontal and that has become the row of the data. ABC also has become the row of the data that was initially a column. So is the case with 10, 20, and 30. Now, this is fine, but in case your data volumes are very large, you have a lot of rows and a lot of columns, transposing can make your queries really, really slow. Well, what do you do? You can actually use a series of M functions to be able to transpose, but not literally transpose the table. It's going to give you the effect of the transpose, but not really transpose the table, but you're going to get the same output. Nevertheless, I'm going to get rid of this and show you that trick. I'm going to create a new step. In the new step, I will convert every single row into a list. So this is going to be list number one. The first row becomes a list. The second row becomes a list and the third row becomes a list. The formula for that is table dot two rows and close the bracket. I feed a table from the previous step, which is nothing but the source. I click on OK and we now have three lists. Now that is going to be my list number one. Uh, that is my list number one. That is my list number two and that is my list number three. Now, what I'm going to do is from the three lists that I have got, which are nothing but the three rows of the data, I'm going to form three columns of the table. So I'm going to say something like this. Hey, take this list, make the first column, take this list, make the second column and take this list and make the third column of a table. So you can now wrap this function in another function called table dot from columns and close the bracket and close the bracket right here. And what you're going to get is nothing but the transpose data. So that's nothing but uh, row number one uh, and row number two, row number three, that is the transpose A, B and C again in the rows 10, 20 and 30 again in the rows. But you have to use these combination of the functions uh, table dot two rows and table dot from columns. If you've been liking the video so far, I have got a full fledged course on the M language in Power Query. Well, these are just tips and tricks, right? But if you want to know the fundamentals of how the M language works, what are lists, what are records, the different concepts of Power Query, how does the looping work? What is each keyword in Power Query? How do you create a custom function in Power Query? And all of the good things that come around with the M language that will take you from the user interface level, from solving basic problems to solve even more advanced and more sophisticated problems using the M language in Power Query. I've got a full course that is open for now. There are a few last state considerations that you have to keep in mind if you would like to enroll into the course. All of those good details are in the description of the video. I highly recommend if you would like to learn the M language with me, this would be a great time to get yourself a seat into the course. All right, trick number three is using records effectively. Now take a look at this data. Again, a simple sales data that I have, and we have to create two additional calculated columns. One is going to be the units into price that is going to give me the sales value, and then maybe a 10% commission on the sales value. Well, if you were doing it the way that the user interface suggests, so you're going to go to the add columns tab and maybe make a custom column once for the sales and the second time for the commission. Well, you can create both the columns in just one go. How? Again, in the add columns tab, make on the custom column, and in the custom column, I'm just going to maybe define a calculation in a record and records start in the square bracket. So I'm just going to define the first calculation by saying, hey, my let's say sales calculation is going to be nothing but units into price. So units multiply by the price. And that is my first calculation. Put a comma to create a second column. And that is going to be my commission. And that is going to be, let's say, sales, which is going to be multiplied with, let's say, a 10% commission. And that's pretty much it. You close the record and this is good to go. This is going to create two columns in just one go. Click on OK. What you get is a record. Sure enough, if you click on the expand button, uncheck the name prefix, sales and commission, two columns that we created. Click on OK. Now we have been able to get the sales and the commission columns created in just one go. Obviously, if you had more columns to create, like five or six columns that you typically create in Power Query, you can define all of those columns within a single record, expand them out at once, and you have all the columns created in just one go. Trick number four, there happens to be a keyword called the is keyword in Power Query that allows you to perform checks. 
Is that a number? Is that a table? Is that a list? Is that a record? Pretty much like the way you say it, you just have to write it that way. Let me show you how. So I have a column here, one A and a list, and I'm gonna create a custom column just to check that is that value a list, a number, or a text. So add columns tab, custom column. The custom column opens up and I'm gonna create nothing but a check and I'm gonna say, hey, is the column is a number. So I'll just say is column, column is number and that's all that I will say. Click on okay and what I'm gonna get is a bunch of trues and falses. Now, you can see that one is definitely a number, therefore I get a true, the rest are false. You can also do that on structured objects like a list or a table. So for example, is this nothing but a list? I can just press enter and you can see that against the list I do get a true. Now this is extremely helpful if you wanna judge what data type of the value is there in a column or in a table or any other object structure that you're trying to work with. And then of course you can use these true and falses to take further actions in your queries or make your queries robust or do whatever that you would wanna do. But the is keyword is super helpful to check what data type is it. Final trick, trick number five called the custom errors. Take a look at this little table that I have. I have a person, I have the number of hours and how much pay did you get? The total pay. Now I'd like to be able to calculate the pay per hour for which I can just simply take my pay, divide that by the number of hours and I'm going to get pay per hour. Let's just do that. Add columns, custom column and I'm going to say hey pay is going to be divided by the hours. I'm going to rename the column to pay per hour and click on OK and that's what we're going to get. Now obviously, because here there was a text, so 1100 cannot be divided with the text value called nil, and therefore it returns you an error, you know, whatever the error might be. What you can do in Power Query is that you can define custom errors. That means this message that you get right here can be customized to whatever you would wanna call it. Now, let's just see how that works. I'm gonna go over to the add columns once again, create a custom column, and this time I'm gonna use the try and the otherwise keyword. Let's just name the column first. So I've called the column pay per hour custom and here is where I will just paste the M code. So at the start of the M code, I'm saying, hey, why don't you just try to do this calculation? Try this particular calculation, pay divided by the hours, which is also what we just did while creating the previous column. So the same thing, pay divided by the hours and I'm using the try keyword here because just in case if this returns me an error, I have the otherwise to fall back on the custom error that I have created. Now, if you carefully take a look at it, I have written the error keyword and within the square bracket, which is nothing but a record, I have defined three parameters, which are the three key essential parts of what makes the error. I mean, there are five in total, but we are just working with three. One is reason of the error, the other one is the message of the error, and the third one is the detail of the error. In the reason, I have said error in the calculation. In the message, I have said pay or hours is not a number. And should you fancy, you can make it more colorful also by saying, why do you make such mistakes, you moron? Don't do that, but hey, I'm just gonna click on okay. And now if you just peek into the error that we have got, well, the person would understand. Now there happens to be a way to even extract what the error is. That means these messages or the custom messages that we have written right here, there is a way to be able to extract these messages from the errors, only get that data and send it out to anybody just to kind of rectify the data that the data was riddled with such errors. All of that and a lot more is something that I talk about in my M language course, which is live for enrollment. In case you'd like to take your Power Query skills to the next level and learn the language behind the Power Queries engine, which is the M language, I highly recommend that you please take a look at the link in the description. We've got three parts to the course. The first one is concepts. Then we talk about recipes and patterns and case studies. And finally, we talk about the most important functions in the M language. Like I said, there are a few last eight considerations for the course. Please visit the link in the description of the video and I look forward to see you on the other side.